Hello, my fellow cutie quilters. My name is Christy. I'm going to be quilting this king size quilt on my cutie frame, and I wanted to demonstrate how I get all the layers together and onto my quilting frame, even though I don't have a large space to work with. This cutting mat is about 35 inches by 24 inches, and that's what I'm going to use to get my layers together. Let's get started. Okay, so here I have my backing fabric my batting, my quilt, a long ruler, and some pins. So I'm going to start by laying out my backing because <clears throat> that's what goes on the bottom. So to give you some measurements, my backing is 126 by 118. The batting is 122 by 120 and the quilt is 108 by 108 so as you can see I have a lot of extra of both my batting and my backing uh, compared to the quilt which uh, that's what you need when you're quilting on a frame now the backing is uh, 18 inches longer than the quilt on one side and 10 inches longer on the other so what I'm going to do because I generally do not use leaders when I use my cutie. I just have extra backing and batting uh, on the ends to use to clamp it. So I'm going to take that side of the backing that is 18 inches because my backing is non-directional. It doesn't really matter which way that I put it and my quilt is square. I'm going to take that 18 inches and put that on the up and down side because that's where you really need the extra fabric um, versus the side so that's 18 inches longer so it's going to be about nine I've got about nine inches uh, on each side to work with and then the sides will be uh, they'll be about five inches on each side which is more than enough all right so let's get started I've got my backing fabric here and it is the length that is longer. It's actually, it's a, it's a wide back fabric, but it's actually 118 inches wide rather than 108, which is really nice. Um, I believe I got it from Keepsake Quilting. So if you are looking for wide back fabric, that's, uh, that's one place to look. And it's, it's really nice that it's longer than 108 because 108 would not be big enough for this quilt. And I would have still had to piece it even with 108 wide backing. Okay, so what I have here is my backing laid out. And this edge here is the width of the fabric. And I just did a quick measurement just to make sure and it's 120 inches. Um, and so this is the smaller side of the fabric. The other, um, the length is 134. So this crease here, I don't know if it shows up on camera, but there's a, there's a crease here, a fold line, and that is the center of the fabric. So I've got that roughly centered on my cutting mat. It doesn't really matter if it's centered or not. Um, just close to it because we're going to be working from the center out. So I've got this laid out on my cutting mat. Then I'm going to get my batting. Quilter's Dream Bamboo. I've got the king size, which is 122 by 120, which is roughly square so and much larger than my quilt. So it doesn't really matter which way that I put it. So I found the, the center of my batting and I'm going to line it up with the center of my backing. I'm actually putting my batting all the way to the top of the backing. I don't always do that, but I have a lot of extra uh, batting for this project and it will help me when I go to uh, clamp my quilt because it'll, it'll give a little more um, meat to the quilt than just the backing fabric alone because I don't use leaders. Um, I find that helps. So let me get this unfolded and smoothed out. So 
So, and because the, the backing and the batting are so much bigger than my quilt, it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly center to center, but I wanna get it close to make sure that uh, I have plenty of room on all sides. Also by lining the batting up with the backing, I can um, know that it's straight and not skewed. And as you can see, like even my backing isn't um, straight. There is a little V here, it looks like from where they cut it, but this to this is straight. So I can line up towards that using that as a reference. Because I don't want my batting skewed because then I could, you know, I could run out of batting on either side if it's really badly skewed. Okay, so lay out the batting, smooth it out. You're only worrying about what's on top of the cutting board, right? So there's a lot of backing and batting that's just hanging off my table and I'm just not worrying about that right now. We will get to it. So smooth it all out. This bamboo batting is nice and soft. Okay. Then I get my quilt. And this is um, vintage lace uh, by Lo and Behold Stitchery. So this, this point here is the center of the quilt. And I got threads all over the place. It's okay. So what I want to do now is I know I've got about nine inches uh, on top and bottom extra backing fabric. And when you don't use leaders, you need a minimum, and, and I mean minimum, of about five inches. Five inches is probably pushing it. So I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go seven inches. So of course my quilt is right sides up because you know that's how you quilt it backing is right side down top is right side up so i've got my ruler here and i'm going to line up seven inches on the straight part of my backing and that's where i'm going to align my quilt top so i'm going to move it move my ruler down Still line it up at the seven inches. Make sure my quilt goes up to there. <coughs> now if I was smart, I'd have done six inches and uh, then I could lay my ruler this way, but I'd rather go more than, and then have to be a struggle. So lining up the seven inches and tugging just the top, not the backing and batting, so that it is aligned with the ruler. And this also helps me keep it straight. So now this is the edge where the backing has that little V, so I'm gonna go by the batting at this point. Just smooth out my quilt. And again, I'm only worried about what's on my cutting table. Not worried about anything that's off the table. So I'm just gonna check. <coughs> Excuse me. Seven inches, seven inches. Move that stuff out of the way. Seven inches. All the way from one side of the table to the other. And once I'm satisfied with where my quilt top is, I'm going to take my pins and I'm going to start pinning. Now you could, if you prefer, do spray basting. Uh, you could use safety pins if you want. I'm just using straight pins because um, I will just be careful and um, safety pins just take a little longer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin it a few inches down from the top of the quilt. And the reason I do that is the first thing that I do when I get my quilt on my frame is based within that top quarter inch. And I don't want my pins anywhere near where my machine will be stitching. So I'm gonna, I just, starting in the middle, 
and I'm just going to pin all the way across. And this is where it's nice to be working on a cutting board and not uh, the ironing surface or a rug because, you know, the pins won't go into the cutting mat. I tend to put my pins fairly close together. Um, you do what is comfortable for you. I just I don't want any shifting at all. So this is you know very similar to pinning to a leader. And it doesn't matter if this line of pins is straight or not. I don't know if you can see in the camera, but I'm kind of coming at an angle here. It doesn't matter because the point of the pins is just to hold the fabric the quilt and the batting and the backing together and stabilize it. It doesn't matter that this is straight because you've already lined up your backing and your quilt to be straight. So you start from the middle and I go all the way to one edge of the table and then I come back to the middle and do the other side. So I went ahead and did a little bit off camera. Um, I actually took out all the pins I had put in and I moved this quilt down just a little bit to 10 inches down from the top and repinned it. Again, starting in the center, working one way, back to the center, and then all the way out. The reason I did that is because I've got so much extra uh, backing um, that I just wanted to make sure I had a good amount of front for clamping. Um, and even with the 10 inches, that still gives me 8 inches at the end, which is more than enough to account for some shrinkage and then some. So I decided to give myself a little room and went up to 10 inches. So again, I've pinned the entire uh, width of the cutting board. So now, what I need to do is I need to shift the quilt so I can do some more. So I'm just gonna come on the side, grab the backing and the batting on this side and all three layers on this side, and then just pull. <clears throat> and just get it moved over. So I'm pulling it so that my last pin is still on the table, but it's near the edge. And once I have that, then I'm going to straighten everything out. Again, I'm only worried about what is on the table. Everything else doesn't matter. And theoretically, I'm really only worried about this top half where the quilt meets everything and up. So again, my last pin Actually, I've got the last two pins here on the table, so I could pull it a little further if I needed to, but I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna have to pull another time anyway. So, I'm gonna get my quilt smoothed out, and I'm gonna get my ruler again, and I'm gonna start checking again. I'm gonna start from here where I know 10 inches. gotten 
completely all the way to this end of the quilt. Now I'm going to slide the quilt and actually this quilt is so big rather than sliding it I'm just going to pick it up and move, move it over. If your quilt is smaller and you only need to scoot a little bit then the sliding might work for you. I've definitely used sliding in a few other quilts that I've done. So I I'm pretty sure this will be the biggest quilt I've put on in a kitty frame. So again, I'm moving it until I've got one or two pins left on the table. And once I get to that point, then I'm going to worry about getting it straight and flat. Just to give you a scale of reference, these pins are about uh, roughly two and three quarters inches away from the top of the quilt. And again, that's just so that they're out of the way when I do my basting. And they're also far enough down that if I have to have my hands on the quilt while it's basting, they're not in the way. I'm not going to poke myself. Okay, so I've gone all the way across the whole quilt and got it pinned uh, to my batting and my backing. And that is actually all the prep that I do before putting it on the frame. Okay, now that our quilt has been pinned all along the top to the batting and the backing, we're gonna put it on the cutie frame. Now I have the video set up closer to one end of the frame than the other so that you can get a good view of what I'm doing. Uh, what I'm doing on this side is the same thing I'm doing on the other side. So you're not going to miss anything. So I like to start in the upper left of my quilt. So I'm going to get it up on the frame under the foot and get it so that it's over the back bar here. Well, like I said, I don't use a leader. I just have extra backing on my quilt. So as you can see, I've got plenty of room to clamp this and still get to my quilt. I'm gonna move my machine all the way to the left and get these elastic bands out of the way. Move my machine all the way to the left so that I know where my stopping point is. Again, get that fabric under the foot. quilt is so big and so much weight. So usually I would kind of line up the edge of my quilt fairly close to where my stitching area starts, but um, since I'm using some different weight threads, I want to really test my tension with this fabric and this batting and backing and these threads. So I'm actually going to scoot it a little bit over so that I have some room in this area over here off of the quilt to test my tension. All right, I'm gonna go get my clamps. So I'm gonna put it right about here 
So I've got plenty of clearance. Um, I can actually push it up a little bit further. Oh, these stupid elastics. I don't want to get, I don't want to have to go too close and, and worry about bumping my clip. But I also would like to do as few re-hoops as necessary on this quilt, because like I said, it's quite big. So I've got that holding it. Let me get the other two clamps. And I'll just try and make sure everything's nice and smooth. And uh, just like on the, when I was pinning it on the table, I'm not really worrying about what's hanging off the frame. I'm really just worrying about what's in the frame between my clamps. And I just want to make sure that is nice and smooth and flat. I'll use extra threads. I'm going to pull this up just a touch. I don't worry too much about if this is straight to the quilt because honestly with a with a hoop frame it's pretty difficult to get it spot on perfect. Um, so I just, you know, get as close as I can. I don't worry about it too much because I, I don't do uh, edge to edge pantographs and I don't do computerized, so it doesn't matter if my quilt is perfectly straight or not because I generally do custom quilting and I will just quilt to how the, the block is laying. So now I got these two big clamps for the bottom. Well, what I, what I refer to as the bottom of the frame. Uh, if this was a long arm frame, this would be the belly bar. And I put my two clamps on there. And then you can turn them slightly to give them a little, little more tension on your fabric. And you don't want your fabric, you don't want your quilt hoop too tight. I don't know if you can see this, but I can, you know, pretty much grab my finger from underneath, and that's that's what you want. It's still nice and smooth and flat. I'm going to peek underneath. Make sure my batting, I'm, I'm sorry, my backing is nice and smooth and no puckers, and it is. And I'm actually going to, no, I'm going to put my side clamps on. So over on the far side, let's see if I can turn the camera, you won't be able to see super well, but on the far side, you see how the quilt falls over the edge of the frame. Well, remember, I've got a line of pins there in my top row of blocks, so I'm just going to take out the couple of pins that are going to be where the side clamps go. Let me adjust the camera a little so you can kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm just pulling out two pins so that I can put my side clamps on. Now this side is pretty close. Oh, where's my, my clipper thing? Um, it's pretty close to the edge. So I don't know how much I'll be able to. Oh yeah, I'll be able to. So I just um, can you see? Can you see the clamps that I have here? They're just um, these clamps like this that I just ordered off of Amazon, and I just have an elastic looped around the edge of my frame, and that's what I use um, when my fabric is too short um, to reach the sidebar. And then I just have a little toggle that I can tighten it, and that will hold that fabric. Down. Now you notice I only clamp the backing. I did not clamp the batting because the, the batting can stretch and you just want it on the backing. So I've got 
all of my clamps down. I've got the rest of my quilt just kind of hanging here in front and on the side, and that's fine. It's not going to go anywhere. I have to do the elastic in the back. And there's so little fabric here that these just kind of hang down, and that's fine. My the, Where I'm going to be stitching is far enough away from these clamps, and I'm not super worried about it. All right, oh, I forgot to thread my machine. And so we'll just do that really quick. I've already got my bobbin in there with my bobbin thread. Uh, so let me turn my machine on and get it threaded real quick. So now I'm going to baste. Now the Cunique machine does have a basting stitch, but uh, I, it doesn't work well for me. I, I think I'm just not uh, used to it. I think I just need to practice more with it and kind of get its rhythm. So usually when I baste, I just keep it in regulated crews but I set my stitches per inch way down. And of course, you wouldn't even have to do that. You could um, stitch around your top, bottom, and sides with your regular stitch count, but um, I do bring it down just in case I have to rip it out and redo anything, then it's not so hard. So I'm gonna start right up here in my upper left corner. I'm within that quarter inch seam allowance uh, that I know my binding is going to cover. Needle down, needle up, pull up my bobbin thread, and I'm going to start. Now I do the, I'm going to do the top first, and then I'll do the side. And I always put my needle down and get myself ready before I start stitching. It just kind of helps me, you know, get in, get into the mindset and get ready. So here we go. Now as I go, I'm going to be watching to make sure this lays flat or if there's anything I need to, any fullness I need to work in or seam allowances I need to make sure are laying in the right way. So I might start and stop and go real slow. This is not a race. This is an important part and you wanna make sure you do it well. Here we go. I'll also add that another reason why I use the um, very low stitches per inch is in case I do fall outside that quarter inch and I need to take it out so it doesn't show, it's easy to take out. So as you can see, the pins are out of the way. They're, they're not anywhere near my needle. My hand's not hitting them. My hand is over them, so it's not touching it. I'm not getting poked or stabbed or anything like that. But it's holding my quilt where I want it to be. Sorry, my cable is caught. Okay. So I'm just gonna check that this seam allowance is laying the way I need it to lay. So I got a little bit of fullness right here and a kind of a bulky seam where I've got multiple fabrics coming together. So I'm just gonna gently lay this out and try and ease in that fullness so it doesn't end up in any kind of pucker. If you just ease it in, it will be fine. Okay, and I'm gonna be getting close to my, the end of my stitching area. I don't, I don't know that I'll get all the way through this burgundy block, but I'm still gonna check my seam allowance, make sure it's going the right way, and make sure that any fullness gets brought in. And I think that's about it. definitely outside the quarter inch. Yeah, so that'll be coming out. So again, you know, I'm glad I did the four stitches per inch because that'll be easy to come out once I get the binding on and need to cover that little bit of stitching. Okay, cut my threads. I'm gonna do the side.
So now my top is stable. I can take these pins out, which I will do in a minute, but I just want to get this side basted. But I'm going to take this one out because it is right in my stitch path. I like to start from the bottom and go up. Hey cutie quilters, I apologize. This is a few days later from the last time I was recording. Uh, I just had a, a plethora of issues recording ranging from kid interruptions to phone getting filled up to bobbin issues. So um, I had to stop recording that day. Um, in the meantime, I have um, gone and quilted the entire first row and came back and quilted the second row. Um, but I will show you close-ups of what I do um, going into the third row. So let me just explain what I did. You saw me baste across the top of my quilt. Um, what I was going to do then was baste up the side of my quilt. Once I had those two basting lines in, I quilted everything that was in my frame area. Then I shifted my quilt to the left got my clamps back on, basted along the top again and removed my pins, quilted that area, shifted again, basted, quilted, etc. till I got all the way to the end. Then I shifted my quilt up so I was all the way at the right side of the quilt for the second row, clamped it all down, basted the right side, quilted what was in my hoop, slid my quilt down to the right, and then there was, at that point there was nothing to baste because I was not on any edges of the quilt, so I just quilted what I had, shifted my quilt, quilted what I had, and on and on until I got to the far left side of my quilt, and then I basted along here and then did my quilting, and that's where I am now. So I'm gonna show you how I shift the quilt to my third row, how I do the basting on the side for that, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, I'm gonna switch the camera and see you in a minute. Okay, so hopefully you have a good view of the whole frame. What I'm going to do is shift my quilt upwards so that I can start the next row. So I'm going to start by taking my side clamps off. <clears throat> and then these bottom ones. And actually, I'm going to grab one of these. This quilt is so heavy that uh, I'm just going to use the clamp to hold some of the weight while I shift the quilt. So I can go about three blocks. I'm just going to clamp this here just for now, just to kind of hold it. And I'll adjust it later. You don't always have to do that. It's just that this quilt is so heavy and it will just keep falling down. I'll get my that clamps off. I'm going to slide my machine down with the rubber bands out of the way and see how far I have over and move my quilt so it's close to that. I want to start. I have to take these clips off. They're in the way. That didn't work. Um, I want to start with this block, so I'm going to push it as far back as I can. I want to get as much quilting space as I can. Okay, so my upper left um, corner of my machine is about there, so I don't want to go past that. My clamp. 
so I get one side where I want it and clamp. And then I'm going to adjust it so it's roughly straight. This clamp and then this clamp. Now I'm going to try and make sure everything is laying flat and smooth and then I'm going to put then I'm going to put my bottom clamps on. I'm going to check my backing. Everything looks good. Give these a twist. Tighten it up a little bit. Again, you don't want it too tight. You're not making a, a trampoline or a drum here. We still want to be able to grab our finger. I'm going to grab my side clamps, get them on, and these side clamps here. check the backing one more time and I'm going to roll up the back here and get my elastics on. Okay, now I'm ready for my next set of quilting. The first thing that I need to do is base down this side because this is an edge of the quilt that's not tacked down. So what is really important about this method is that you start from a corner, generally the, the top left corner, it's where I like to start. Base the, the two edges, the left edge and the top edge, then do your quilting and, and then slide your quilt. Every time you slide your quilt after that first hooping, you want there to be at least one side that is um, firmly attached. By that I mean your top, your batting, and your backing are firmly attached. So on the first time that you slide your quilt, um, everything to the left has been quilted so that is firm and stable. Your three layers are not in that area are not going anywhere. So then you just have to worry about the top and then if, if you're at the edge of your quilt, the edge of your quilt. When you don't baste your whole quilt you can't just do your quilt wherever you want. Um, you need to make sure it's stabilized. So you need to go across in a row and then do the next row. Now I did my second row right to left because that was just easier for shifting the quilt. I just had to shift it up a few blocks instead of having to come all the way over to the left. But if for whatever reason your machine doesn't like going right to left, you certainly can go back left to right. But you know, again, so like where we are right now, the top of my quilt is stitched down and stable. So I know everything going there is not going to move. So when I hooped this and I made sure my backing was straight and smooth and my top and my batting was straight and smooth, I know there's not going to be any shifting or puckers or tucks or anything in there. And I've got my sides held securely between my between these clips and these clamps. And then I'm going to be basting down this side. And once this side is basted, all four sides of my quilt are locked in in one way or another with all three uh, layers secured. So I know I can quilt without getting any tucks or pleats. So let me go ahead and do this basting. <coughs> and again, I'm gonna use uh, four stitches per inch for my basting instead of the basting stitch.
needle down, needle up, pull up my bobbin thread, needle down. I hold my threads in my non-dominant hand so that my dominant hand can press the button to start. And once I got a couple inches in, I can let go of these threads. And now I'm just gonna come down. Again, within that quarter inch. Just slowly coming down. And once I get as far as my machine will go, I just go off the edge, stop, needle up, draw out some thread, needle down, needle up, brings up my bobbin thread, and cut them all. Now my quilt is stabilized on this edge, this edge by the basting, this edge by the quilting, this edge by the clamps, and this edge by the clamps. So I know that I can go ahead and quilt in this area. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and then I will show you how I shift it over to the left and continue. One more thing I wanted to mention. As you can see, um, the rest of my quilt is just hanging off the frame. It's just loosey-goosey, as Leah Day would say, um, in the side. It's just hanging down, and there's my cat hanging out. Um, I'm not worried about that um, because I'm only worried about what's in my hoop. Now, if you have a machine where you need to use the handles below your frame, you can certainly take this and roll it up. Um, again, you don't need to worry about is my backing batting and quilt all lined up and no puckers in this area because you're not quilting this area yet. So it can still move. You don't need to worry about that. So yeah, I just let it, I just let it hang there and it's fine because it's when I get it up in the hoop that I'm going to make sure everything is straight and flat and not puckered and it'll be good. Okay, so I finished quilting this zone and it's time to shift my quilt. So I'm going to be shifting it to the left. The first thing I'm going to do is take my machine and put my needle down in the leftmost part um, that I want in the next zone. So that's going to be right here. So I'm just going to put my needle down. Now I take my clamps off. So I take the bottom ones off. I take the side off. <clears throat> these sides. And now the back, I only take two of them off. I will take the left and the middle one off and leave the right one on because I'm going to slide the quilt to the right. So after I've slid, the right clamp will become the left clamp of the new zone. So with the needle, excuse me, with the clamp on and with the needle down, that helps my quilt not shift so much as I sl slide it. So I grab my machine and the quilt and just gently pull it along and get those elastics from catching. Come back and keep pulling. So I'm going to pull until I've reached my machine's limit and then I'm just going to go back just a touch. Just like that. And I'm going to adjust the quilt to make it roughly straight to the top. So I'm, I'm looking at this seam here and trying to keep it equidistant from that top bar. And I get my two other clamps. Stick one there. This one slides down a little bit, and this one goes in the middle. Adjust my quilt again. 
And again, I'm, I'm looking for it to be nice and straight and smooth. I want to make sure that how far down I want a quilt is available. So I'm going to bring my needle up and pull out the thread. See how far I got down. Yep, I can go down as, I'm, as much as I want. Let's see if I pulled it over. Yep, that'll be good. All right. So I'm going to finish laying this out. I'm going to get the bottom clamps and get them on. Check my backing. Make sure it's good. And it is. And I'm going to do my side clamps. I'm just going to put one on each side for now. I only have two of them. Okay. So that is it. I'll give one more check on the bottom now that I adjusted some. Yep, still good. I'm going to do the elastics. Actually, before I do that, I just I want to show you something. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see the stitching because it's an 80 weight thread, which is very, uh, very small and light gray. So it really, really blends in with the backing fabric. But you can see there's no puckers. There's no tucks. There's nothing wrong on the back, even though it was not basted before quilting. So I'm just going to roll it up, get my elastics, and then I'm ready for quilting. All right. So at this point, I am in the third row from the top, second zone over. I don't need to do any basting because I'm not at the edge of any of my quilt. My quilt layers are secured here with quilting, along the top with quilting, over here with clamps, and over here with clamps. Now, if I get to be quilting down here and I'm feeling like uh, it's not as sturdy as I want it to be, I can pull this clamp and put it over here if I need to. But usually it's not too much of a problem. One of these days I'm going to order a second set of those clamps from Grace so that I can do two clamps on each side. So yeah, that is that basically it. Um, you're just going to keep, you know, quilting and shifting and quilting and shifting. And if you have, if you're at any edges of your quilt, make sure you baste it. And just always make sure that you have um, some quilted, at least one edge quilted, ex of, except for your first hooping, of course, because no edges have been quilted. But that's what the pins are there for. Um, so yeah, as long as there's at least one side that has the quilting and you make sure you're backing lays out nice and smooth you'll be good to go just don't don't skip around you have to you have to have that at least one side quilted so i hope this helps thanks for watching